Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Well, right now what we're doing is we're heading up to the lower entrance of the Windsor Cave and we're going to see what we can find there. So come along for the ride. Upon arriving to the entrance, we noticed a Jamaican boa in the rocks above the cave trying to capture bats. After a little bit of climbing, we were able to get hold of the snake. All right, so here at the lower entrance of the Windsor Cave, I've just captured a Jamaican boa. So he was waiting at the entrance of the cave to catch the bats as they came out. When they're bigger, they eat bigger things like rats. But at this stage in its life, it's still young, so it feeds on bats. So he was just on a vine outside the cave, and as the bats were coming out, he was trying to strike them. So here I'll come in close. Right now he's a little scared. I'll zoom in. And he might bite me, so I'm trying to be very careful. But he seems to be quite calm, although he urinated all over me. And a fact about Jamaican boas is when they urinate on you, it smells really bad. So right now, my nostrils are flaring and I smell the stench of it. And it's getting all over my body and all over my clothes because he keeps on spraying it out. So I'm going to be smelly for the next couple of days probably. There are two important things to note here. The first is that normally I would not go out and capture a wild animal unless there was a good reason to do so. In this case, the reason was there was another project going on on the Jamaican boa, which I was helping out with. See, what's great about being a wildlife biologist working at a research station is that there's many projects often going on at once. And if you're lucky enough, you can help out with other projects. This project was looking at the natural history of the Jamaican boa and what would happen if you translocate it. Would it return to the original location it came from or would it stay in the new location? So that's what they were doing with this. The second important thing to note here is that I was holding this snake for quite a bit of time and noticed that it was not looking to bite me. Normally when you're holding a snake that you're unfamiliar with, you would hold the head in a way that it was not able to turn around and bite you. This snake, however, was quite calm even though it was trying to get away. And I felt comfortable not holding the head. The next morning we begin to collect data from the snake. The first thing we want to do is being able to identify the snake as an individual. To do this, we insert a pit tag just under the skin. What a pit tag is, is a microchip that when scanned has a unique number. This means that if we release the snake into the wild and recapture it, we'll be able to identify it to an individual level and find out where it first came from. After the pit tag is injected, we disinfect the site and finally scan to make sure that the pit tag is actually working. If you look just above my hand holding the snake, you can see it producing liquid. This is called musk, and it is a very bad smelling liquid that is used for defense of the snake. Right now what I'm doing is I'm measuring the snake. Measuring the snake can be very difficult, especially taking body length, because the snake likes to coil around. In order to do this, you need to take a measuring tape and do it really section by section until you finally reach the tail. The next step we did was to measure the head length and head width. When we're finished with this measurement, we will put the snake back into a terrarium where we'll wait until it defecates so we can determine what the snake was eating before we captured it. And that is how you collect some basic data from a snake. This project, however, was looking at how translocation affected the boas. And what we did to the snake was insufficient enough for translocation experiments. If we wanted to do these experiments, we would have had to have inserted a radio transmitter along with the pit tag into the snake. So that once we release the snake, we'd be able to track it using telemetry. This snake, however, was a juvenile and was too small for the transmitters we had. I hope you enjoyed this session.